Transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the charming Johann Strauss operetta, Rosalinda, starring Gordon McRae and his guest, Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to travel to Vienna for one of the most delightful operators of all time. Under its original title, Fledermaus, this work is a great metropolitan opera favorite. Dorothy Warren showed is Rosalinda, and I'm her husband, Henry, as we bring you the great Johann Strauss music for Rosalinda. Rosalinda, who, who's that singing? Oh, it's Alfredo Alivanto, the most romantic singer in Vienna. I will not have my wife serenaded by a soupy troubadour. Now, Henry, you're not going to hit him again. Well, there shouldn't be a law against hitting tenors. Why, everybody wants to hit tenors. Well, I just hope you enjoy your week in jail for hitting him the other night. Listen to it. I'd like to tear him apart note by note. Well, did you have to slam the window... Rosalinda, if you want somebody to serenade you, why not listen to a man sing? A baritone. Mm. Rosalinda, love of mine, hear my ardent wooing. Isn't that more romantic? Rosalinda, dove of mine, hear my tears. Imagine mooning over a tenor. Train with you, I chair your nest, sweetheart, I implore you. Let me come and at your breast, vow that I... romantic of you, dear. But really, you only pay attention to me when you're jealous. No, that's not true. I... Who is it? It's your lawyer. Well, Blint. Ah, good evening. I've come to accompany you to jail. Mm -hmm. How do you like this? A lawyer's supposed to keep you out of jail. This one's putting me in one. But, darling, it's only for five days. No, not five days. I pleaded with the judge, and he changed your sentence. Now, that's what I call a smart lawyer. Just overnight, eh? No, he made it eight days. Eight days? <laughs> well, at least I'll know where you are during that time. Uh, for eight days in jail, I could have hit that tenor a, well, a little harder. Ooh. 
would think that any lawyer would betray his own employer. Really, that's too much for me. Goodness me. We shall see. When I thought my case was ended, worse it got instead of mended. And the guilty one is he. You mean me. Really, he. How can it be? Yes, he's the one to blame, you'll see. Just what to say? We lost the case. I'll soon be jailed. You mean you failed. What will you do? I wish I knew. Let me propose a thing or two. If that's a jest, I must protest. Your sense of humor is revolting. It seems you want to be insulting. Be calm and sage. Control your rage. Unlike this fool, I'm very cool. Your husband should go back to school. You stutter over every word. Worst slander I have never heard. Don't tell me you complain. Now you insult again. You give me such a pain. You must be quite insane. You talk as if you had no brain and turn to strike a weather vein. Yes, she is right. You better go before I have to tell you so. It's for the beef that you should go to the door. And all I got to say is it's no use crying over a spilt tenner. Now, kiss your wife and let's get to jail. Uh, all right. Kiss me goodbye, Rosalinda, my darling. Oh, Henry. Hmm. Hmm. Do you miss me? Oh, I don't know what I'll do without you. Hmm. Hmm. You mean I have to give this up for eight days? Oh, Jiminy, I don't think I'll be able to bear it. I do so hate to eat alone. For eight long days alone here. story about my having to go to jail. Now I can really go on a toot. And Rosalinda won't check up on me for a second. Yeah, be careful. Careful? <laughs> I'm going to the grand ball tonight. We'll be just like my bachelor days again. Why, I can flirt with every girl in the place. <laughs> <laughs> Rosalinda will find out about it. Oh, no, she won't. I'll go as, uh, well, the uh, Marquis Renard. Uh, well, at least do me one favor. Leave your watch at home. My watch? Yes, the one that chimes... Every time you dangle that watch in front of a pretty girl's eyes, she forgets what time it is. <laughs> I won't use the watch, but merely my charm. Then perhaps some pink champagne. 
and well, a few soft words in this manner. Drink, my sweetheart, drink with me. Wine will make your heart feel free. When your heart beats strong and true, all things will seem clear to you. You will see that joys don't last. See that love's a dream. See that vows are broken first, or not what they seem. All too fleeting, all too brief, laughter is and happiness. But in wine you'll find relief through forgetfulness. Forget what cannot be Fortune's kiss Brings you bliss If you remember this Happy he Happy she Who forget what cannot be Fortune's kiss brings you bliss if you remember this. Come, Blint, we're off to the ball. Madame, Madame Rosalinda. Yes, yes, what is it, Adele? Could you give me the evening off, Madame? Why, you get more evenings off than any other maid in Vienna. But I've just received word. My aunt is dying. And the last time your aunt died, you stayed away for three days. She dies slow. <laughs> or could it be that you want to go to the Grand Ball tonight? Well... Well, you stay here and work. Poor auntie. It'll be the first time she'll have to die without me. Uh, um, Madam Rosalinda... If you let me off, I'll tell you a secret I just overheard. Well, uh, that depends on the secret. All right. Your husband isn't going to jail at all. What? He's going to the ball disguised as a... a bachelor. <gasps> as Marquis Renard. I overheard him just now. Oh, that big sneak. Adele, <laughs> you're going to that ball as my lady-in-waiting. <gasps> If he can be a marquee, why, why, I'll be a, a countess. A countess? Yes. The mysterious countess Humantazi of Hungary. How's that for double-crossing a double-crosser? <laughs> We'll return for the second act of Rosalinda in just a moment. This morning in Washington, the Interstate Commerce Commission authorized an increase in railroad freight charges. Such an increase is merely a recognition of increases in the cost of producing rail transportation, which has taken place as far back as 1949. 
In these days when almost everything costs more, the natural question is, how will this rise in freight rates affect the prices of the things we buy? And the answer is that on the average, total railroad transportation charges represent such a small part of the prices we pay that changes in freight rates either up or down seldom have any direct effect at all on retail prices. Even if the freight rate increases authorized since 1949, including the one authorized today, were to be reflected in full in the prices you pay for goods, the total increase in price would be something less than one half of one cent out of each dollar spent. And that includes the increases in rates on raw materials and everything else that goes into the finished product, as well as in the rates on the products themselves. But you do have another interest in the news of today's authorization for increased freight rates, for it means that railroad revenues will be brought more nearly in line with the increases in the cost of producing transportation which have accumulated since 1949, so that railroads will be the better able to meet the transportation needs of commerce and the demands of national defense, the better able to serve you. Now, here is Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee version of Rosalinda, starring Gordon McRae as Henry and Dorothy Warren Schold as his lovely wife, Rosalinda. Both have gone to the Grand Ball in disguise. Henry is the Marquis Renard, and Rosalinda as the Hungarian Countess Humontazi. Won't you join us at the ball? What a sight, what a night, is the ball the prince is giving. What a joy to be living on a night so gay and bright. Like a story out of fairyland, to us it all seems very grand. As a charming host on this night, we a handsome prince shall see. When it comes, let us all sing his praise in the words of his friend. When it's all, so many friends. Wonderful party, Blint. Are you drinking all that pink champagne because you want to forget? Certainly. I want to forget I'm thirsty. Blint. Uh, yes, sir? Who is that ravishing-looking creature in the silver mask? Oh, that's the Countess Humantazi. Hungarian. What a figure. What grace and charm. Uh, haven't you ever met her? Oh, now, how could I tie down the way I am? You've been doing fine with Fifi, the ballet dancer. Ah, uh, but compared with that beauty, Fifi is a wooden elephant. Excuse me, I'm going to ask the Countess to dance. May I present myself, Countess? I am the Marquis Renard, and I should be honored if you would dance with me. Would you, Countess? Again. Huh? Oh, that's French, isn't it? No, no, it is Hungarian. It means yes. Oh, I'm glad. Shall we dance? Ah, oh, Countess, you waltz like a dream. Why, the party came to life the moment you entered. But as I came in, you seem to be enjoying yourself very much. Oh, that was Fifi. She doesn't mean a thing. No, oh, I see. Is she your wife? Oh, no, no, I'm not married. You're not? Well, uh, not really. You mean not happily? Yes, that's it. Not, not happily. What a shame. Oh, now, don't misunderstand me. You see, my wife and I have an agreement. Does she know about this? Well, it's, you might say, a, a silent agreement. She's more of a homebody. Oh. See, I'm a different type. I need the whip of adventure and romance, change. You imagine me day in and day out looking at the same face? Unthinkable. Countess, I knew you'd understand. From the moment our eyes met, I, I had the feeling I'd found a kindred soul. You practically described my own life. Remarkable. The only difference is, uh, my husband and I have no agreement whatsoever. Oh, I, I know the type. Dull and possessive. Yes. That is why I am divorcing him. Well, you certainly should. He sounds horrible. Doesn't he? 
Why don't you give me a chance to make you forget your husband? I wish you could. But, my dear Marquis, how do you know who I really am? Under this mask, I might be your wife's maid. Adele? No. No, Monsieur Le Marquis, you have made a great laughable error. Surely you know a great lady from a lady's maid. My dear Marquis, surely you see your real Take my advice, the next time look twice when judging those you meet. My delicate hand is too fine. <laughs> well turned this angle of mine. <laughs> my language and my phrasing, my wish to line most amazing. Would surely not be fear to little. I know now just who you are. You do? Certainly. I can tell by your entire brain that you are a countess. Mm. Now, may I distract you further with this watch of mine? Your watch? Listen. Listen to a chime. Come, I'll show you. It works much better outside. No, no. I think it will work perfectly all right here. Oh, countess, you've made me forget every other woman I've ever known. Her whole bearing is delicious And her figure most propitious And so brittle, feet so little All these treasures kiss I would If I only knew I could Sitting in his prison He has come here bent on treason Thinks of kissing while he's missing From his dungeon for the night You'll be punished for this slight You'll be punished for this slight Soon be banished if you lift your mass for me. Oh, my cavalier, a warning. Do not doubt me when I swear my good will you will be scorning if you touch the mask I wear. All his sighing dying, and his staring, so his tantalizing, my dear Marquis, but it does not tantalize me. Oh, you're the rarest woman I've ever met, Countess. Tell me who you are. Take off your mask and, and let me see for the first time your lovely, lovely face. Mm, all right, Monsieur Le Marquis. I remove this mask and I am simply... Rosalind. Oh, I'm not really married, Countess. But, 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 I need the whip of adventure. But, 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 Romance. But, but, chain. Now, now, Rosalind. Well, you're going to get that change. Oh. <laughs> Rosalind, the waltz is beginning. I, I'd like to ask you two questions. Yes? First, will you honor me with this dance? And second, when you finish divorcing that moronic, imbecilic, stupid husband of yours, 
would you marry me? Uh, I might, under one condition. Oh, anything. Throw away that watch. Watch? Watch. No watch. In exchange, I'll never listen to another tenor again as long as I live. It's a bargain. Now let's waltz, my darling, and show everybody how much in love two married people can be. show will return in just a moment. And now, thanks to the other members of our cast, Sandra Gould, Howard McNair, William Reeve, and to our entire company. The adaptation of the Johann Strauss music to Rosalinda is by Eric Wolfgang Korngold. Paul Kirby is the author of the lyrics. The book is by Gottfried Reinhardt and John Meehan, Jr., and it was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. This month, the American Cancer Society asks all of us to join in the fight to help conquer cancer. The Society's indispensable programs of research and service to cancer patients and education can mean the difference between life and death to thousands of Americans. By your support, you will be doing much to help the Society's efforts to control and conquer cancer. And now here again is charming Dorothy Warren Show. Gordon. You know, it always feels like coming home when I climb aboard the show train. Well, you are a sheer delight, Dorothy. Thank you, Gordon. And say congratulations on the good news in the May issue of Radio TV Mirror Magazine. Well, explain, Dottie. Well, the, the readers voted you the honor of being their favorite radio male singer. And they voted the Railroad Hour as their favorite musical program. Well, that's good news indeed, Dorothy. And as for myself, and in behalf of our entire Railroad Hour company, I wish to thank the editors for conducting the poll and the readers of Radio TV Mirror Magazine for voting this honor to the Railroad Hour and to me. Uh, who are you singing pretty songs to next week, Gordon? The celebrated soprano Nell Tangerman is our guest, Dorothy, and we'll be presenting our Railroad Hour version of the comic operetta Ermini. Well, that sounds like there should be nice harmony in Ermini. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> I'll be listening. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Dorothy, and come home again real soon, huh? All aboard. Well, sir, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so until next week in Ermini, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Rosalinda was presented by special arrangement with Tam's Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can soon be seen starring in Warner Brothers' About Face. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Proceeding was transcribed. Stay tuned for the 13th anniversary program of the Telephone Hour on NBC.